Often I am asked, what does a hero truly need? <laughs> Dota 2 is a game of extremes. Every victory feels momentous and every loss devastating. This excitement is finely tuned whether you're a few experience points away from a new ability or 500 gold short of a big item. It's a game of virtually unending depth and each match is a learning experience. Dota 2 is intimidating, but it's also one of the most fun and generous multiplayer games available. Got a feeling things are gonna pick up real soon. The game places two five-player teams on opposite corners of a map. The goal of these teams is to push forward through three lanes, eventually destroying the opposing team's base. Each player has a unique hero that has his own set of abilities and suggested items to purchase. That's the way. It's these heroes that make Dota 2 as absorbing as it is. Whether you're playing a druid that controls a bear, a prophet that can teleport around a map, or a warlock that summons hellish minions, no hero is mundane. Since there are more than 100 heroes to choose from, you can spend dozens of hours with Dota 2 without having played most of its roster. Seriously, I lost count. The fact that the game is free and none of its heroes are behind a paywall is fantastic. Everything you can purchase is entirely cosmetic, like outfits from your favorite heroes or custom announcers, such as Rux from Bastion. Someone who spends $100 has absolutely zero advantage over someone that doesn't spend anything at all. How about that? While many free-to-play games are designed to suck every last dollar out of you, Dota 2 trusts that you'll enjoy it so much, you'll want to spend money. Valve is displaying a commitment to quality, rather than arbitrarily locking key elements away. Whether or not Dota 2 is your thing, it's encouraging to see such a prominent company take this direction with a relatively new business model. Team Fortress 2 pioneered the way forward, but Dota 2 is a much larger statement that's even bigger in scope. Let's just say it's a winning streak. Yes. Besides going over the basics, the tutorials discuss more advanced concepts such as last hits and controlling the courier, which are both extremely important. You can only gain gold from creatures if you deliver the killing blow, and since each hero has a different attack speed, learning when to strike takes patience. The courier is also invaluable since it delivers items to you, preventing an unnecessary trip back to the base to grab gear. By far the most helpful tutorials come at the end, where matches are simulated with bots. During these matches, you can only select a limited number of heroes, and each of them are relatively easy to learn. This slowly acclimates you to the conditions of a real match, allowing you to get used to the idea of controlling your lane while also participating in team battles. We cross swords! These large-scale battles are the highlight of Dota 2. At some point during any given match, one team will gather in a single lane and try to push as far as they can into enemy territory. This requires the other team to also band together to defend. Two things generally determine the outcome of team battles, skill and composition. Players that can coordinate their attacks and master timing have an enormous advantage over players that spam abilities without thinking. It's also important that each player's abilities complement the team. Nothing is more unfortunate than getting into a big fight when no one on your team can stun opposing players. Despite discussing numerous aspects, there's still so much that the tutorials don't cover, such as jungling, ganking, and the importance of wards. It isn't fair to expect tutorials to cover every single nuance of a game, but in Dota 2, knowledge is power. The team that knows more is the team that will win. While Valve is trying to be instructive and welcoming, it's unfortunate that a lot of things have to be learned the hard way. Just hope you're lucky enough to find patient teammates. This will only hurt a lot. The reason people get upset is because one bad player can ruin the match for everyone. Communication is so vital that it's better to have a less skilled player that can adequately coordinate with the team than someone who's good but never listens. Dota 2 is at its most fun when you're playing with the full team of similarly skilled friends. Of course! Of course, playing with friends isn't always an option, and Valve has implemented a matchmaking system that makes games with strangers as pleasant as possible. Matchmaking is determined by a hidden rating, meaning players of similar skill will be grouped together. It isn't perfect, but rarely will you find yourself in a match with absolutely zero chance of winning. Your bottom tower's in a tight spot. Matchmaking isn't only determined by skill. If a player is inappropriate in any way, you can report them. Someone that is reported too many times will get placed in a low priority queue during matchmaking. While in a low priority queue, players generally wait much longer. Teammates that are particularly helpful or friendly can be commended. The more commendations someone receives, the more likely they are to be paired with players of equal quality. Again, commendations and reports certainly don't guarantee that you won't get an awful teammate, but it demonstrates how dedicated Valve is to rooting out bad players. Nobody likes to play support, yet everybody likes to win. Valve's emphasis on community goes far beyond matchmaking. Players can spectate live matches within the Dota 2 client, as well as download and view their own replays. 
Want to learn a new hero? Browse the plethora of guides on Steam to get an idea of how it plays. Those that purchase the interactive compendium can even assemble their own fantasy team composed of the best Dota 2 players in the world. If your team does well during the Dota 2 International, you'll earn in-game items as a reward. Let's just say it's a winning streak. Yes. Your level of involvement in the larger scene is completely optional, but it's easy to find it if you want it. Multiplayer communities generally rely on outside websites, groups, and forums, but Dota 2 is doing as much as possible to work these things into the game itself, creating a more approachable environment. Competitive multiplayer is disposable in far too many games, and it's often poorly supported and forgotten a few months later, or replaced by annual sequels that change very little. Dota 2 is so carefully constructed and improving at such a rapid rate that it won't only be played for years, but possibly decades. Though it may take dozens of hours to learn, players that grasp Dota 2's ideas will find a game that's almost endlessly enjoyable. Drag your knuckles and get comfortable. The Radiant done it. Sorry, the victory.